Hello, welcome to One Man's Faith today. My name is Neil Owen, and we're going to look at God's Word as we always do and glean some stuff from it and just see what it says to us because it speaks to us because it is the Word of God. And Hebrews tells us that the Word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. So if it's living and active, that means it's always speaking to us. It doesn't mean it's changing. It just means that as we grow, we get to learn new stuff. Because as we mature, the Lord shows us more. That's why you can actually read the Bible over and over, year after year, and God will show you something new. That is, if you are wanting to grow and learn and get new stuff from Him. That's why we're all, I'm, always, I'm always pushing, get into the Word of God, you know, and, and read. Read the Word. We started out a couple of years ago, and we've been reading yearly. Uh, been doing a little different thing on how we read, but I'm trying to. I'm try. I, I gather from what we read every time, and I want to encourage you get into God's Word. We're going to talk about that, I think, here in a little while, um, about the Word of God. Um, so I just, you know, you know, I just got to say I can't overemphasize to you. We need to learn and know what the Word of God is so that when we're confronted with things, we can say, no, that's not right. It's in the Bible this way. So for defense of it is, a, is one reason. So God can speak to you for another reason. So you can use it to speak to others. Yeah, you. You see, the God gave us gifts, and those gifts are supposed to be used for the body for, and for edification of the body. That means we can't hide our giftings. We've got to learn to use them. But I don't know what mine is. Seek God and ask. Seek God and ask. We all have giftings. And I'm not talking about playing the piano or the guitar or the flute or the violin or whatever like that. I'm talking about the, the charismata gifts, the spiritual gifts. Some of you may not like that term. But that's what they're called, charismatic. That's where we get the word charismatic from, charis, and charismata, which is the word for grace gifts. And God expects us to use those. He didn't give them to us just to give them to us and for us not to know that we have them. He gave them to us so that we would not only know, but that we would use them for the furtherance of the kingdom and for the building up of the body. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians that the gifts are for the edification of the body. So I just want to encourage you, find out what your gift is. Find out. Ask Him. Ask Him and then start to try to use it. Find out what that means. If He says you got the gift of prophecy, find out what that means. What is the gift of prophecy? It doesn't mean you're preaching. It means you're speaking the Word of God to somebody. And I don't mean reading the Word of God. I mean God downloads the Word into you and you speak it in their life. We all need that. We all need to hear how, not only how much God loves us, but that He's got a plan for our life because the Word of God tells us that He does. It doesn't say what the plan is. So we've got to ask Him, Lord, what is the plan that you have for my life? And you can do that. And you can seek the Lord and find out. Learn to use your gifts. Well, my church doesn't believe in them. <sighs> That's a sad situation. It's the only time I'll probably ever say it. But if you're in a position like that, then you need to seek one that does. You see, we can't afford any longer to just go to church and play and sit in a pew and listen. That's not going to get it. We've got to start to show Pahrump that God 
is not only a good God, he's a great God, and he speaks to his people, and he works through his people because he wants to build his body. Jesus is coming back in full arraignment, and we're part of him. We are his body. And, and so we're not to be a wimpy, weak body. And if we don't use the gifts that he's given us, if we don't walk in the way that he's told us to walk, then we're not doing perump any good. And so I just want to encourage you. Seek to use your gifts. Seek to use your gifts. Know what they are and seek to use them. All right? Okay. Well, I'll step off my soapbox now, and I'll sit back down here, and um, let's, look, let's look at Colossians. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been here, so uh, I want to review a little bit because we got to understand that this is a letter, okay? You know, it's not like picking up a book and reading chapter 1 and then coming back a couple weeks later and reading chapter 2. Um, it's a letter. And if it was a letter from your honey, you know, you wouldn't read the first page, put it down, and then come back two weeks later and read the second page, would you? I hope not. If so, I have counseling hours, just call me and I'll, you know, and I'll get with you. But we've got to understand this is a letter. And so we've got to keep it kind of flowing and understanding what's going on here. So I'm just going to start... Uh, and, and we'll, we'll read uh, a little bit of chapter 2, and then we'll go back and do a little review, okay? So this is uh, chapter 2, starting with verse 18. We'll read from 18 to the end of the chapter. And I'm reading again from uh, what's called the Passion Translation. Don't let anyone disqualify you from your prize. Don't let their pretended sincerity fool you as they deliberately lead you into their initiation of angel worship. For they take pleasure in pretending to be experts for something they know nothing about. Their reasoning is meaningless and comes only from their own opinions. They refuse to take hold of the true source and honor him as the head. But we receive directly from him, and his life supplies virtually into every part of his body through the joining ligaments connecting us all as one. He is the divine head who guides his body and causes it to grow by the supernatural power of God. For you were included in the death of Christ and have died with him to the religious system and the powers of this world. Don't retreat back to being bullied by the standards and opinions of religion. For example, there are strict requirements. You can't associate with that person. Or don't eat that. Or you can't touch that. These are the doctrines of men and corrupt customs that are worthless to help you spiritually. For though they may appear to possess the promise of wisdom in their submission to God through the deprivation of their physical bodies, it is actually nothing more than empty rules rooted in religious rituals. Woo! Man, does he say some stuff there, huh? And we're going we're gonna to come back and look at this uh, in just a minute. But we read the word. Let's... Let's pray together as we, as, we, as, we, as we open up tonight. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory. Thank you for your word, Lord, that you have given to us, that we can learn, that we can see who you are, that we can know who you are. And God, we want more of you. We want to know more of you. We want to increase in our knowledge of who you are so that we can know you personally, intimately, because you have known us, and you let Jesus come and die for us. So, Father, we give you this time. We give you, Lord, ourselves. Father, I pray you would go and touch lives today. Touch their hearts. Lord, that you would, that, that you would take away sickness, fear, disease. 
inhibitions, addictions in the name of Jesus, that you would bring cure, that you would bring peace and, del and deliverance and uh, uh, freedom, freedom. Thank you for the freedom that we have in you, Lord. And we honor you today. And I thank you for the lives that you are now touching in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, hopefully you have your Bible. If you don't, go get it. Especially, we're getting ready to take a break, so, so go get your Bible and open up to Colossians. If you haven't been following in Colossians, well, this would be a good time because we're going to go back to chapter 1. And for the next 20, 20 minutes, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna look at what Paul has been saying. And then we're going to jump in to the passage that, that we just read. Because I want you to understand what we're getting ourselves into. What, what is Paul saying? We've gone through and we, we've done snippets every week. But it's been a while since we were in chapter 1. And it's, it's been, what, two weeks since we were in chapter 2. Uh, so I want, I want to look at what he's saying so that we can, as we jump into the rest of this passage in chapter 2, we understand where Paul is coming from and what he's saying, okay? So get your Bible, get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> 